How a lovelorn legbeard nearly ended me. Well, I'm glad she didn't use her music of the fox. Welcome to the channel. This is part one of two, both parts rather long, so I will split them into separate videos. Hello to Reddit and Red X Industries. I've been listening to Red X on the YouTube for years now. God, I have been doing this a while, haven't I? <laughs> Your lively endeavors into the beard lore have helped me crawl out of my neurodivergent shell and help me do boring human things like clean and organize. Very important. Organized room is an organized mind. Although, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, <laughs> depends on the day, I guess. Lately, I've been reminiscing about my own cringeworthy high school and junior college days and... I just had to join Reddit to share. Yes, nine hours ago. This is so fresh. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't have those terribly heavy tales that so many have. This is going to be more cringe and less soul crushing. This set of stories is about a derpy leg beard. And I think I require a bit of a diagnosis from y'all to confirm that status. I mean, I might lean towards Kavina since she was more clueless than malicious. But one thing is for certain. There is cringe involved. And that is why we gathered here today. <laughs> I met and befriended her after switching high schools. This story is about her lovelorn escapades and how I almost ended up not alive that one time after saving her butt. She probably don't even acknowledge it either. OP does ask for our forgiveness because this all took place 20 or so years ago. I've forgotten a few details along the way but some of them play over in my head at 2 a.m. when I'm lying awake in bed, trying to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, yes, those formative thoughts. A couple of these things I wouldn't dare speak about in public, but I figure that a little internet anonymity will make me brave. Your identity is safe with me, OP. <laughs> I've never written on Reddit before, and I guess they use cast lists, so uh, here's a cast list. Foxy! We're gonna call her OP, but that's OP. <coughs> Female, a high school sophomore when this story began. I transferred to another school and somehow became a junior, taking junior and senior classes. Awkward, a bit overweight, and really into books, art, and music. Artist! I have to call her this because while she was an artist at the time, she looks straight out of a Renaissance painting. Super sweet, but grounded person. She is now an art slash English teacher for young children, and I think that defines her very well. New York, a super extrovert who pulled me, a super introvert, into the fold and out into the real world. It's always how it works. <laughs> Extroverts adopting introverts. She, for real, had a girl from a small town that goes to New York and does cool things story right after high school. Spoiler, she ran out of money. <laughs> She has a nice way of being honest without being an a-hole. Like, she would tell you that you should pluck that unibrow, but she'd do so privately. There was also Athlete, only one of us that was remotely athletic. She had been friends with the other girls since first grade. She was completely no-nonsense, maybe even picked on the beard just a little bit. Woods is a boy, and he is the milady of this story. <laughs> he looked very much like Elijah Wood, and as this story starts around the time that the second Lord of the Rings movie came out, every girl in school was gushing about him. He was not the only object of this beard's desire, but he was definitely her main squeeze. Or so she wanted it to be, I suppose. And then of course we have uh, the titular leg beard of the tale, uh, Starfish Beard. Short, like five foot nothing, round with tiny feet and hands reminiscent of a starfish. <laughs> uh, that's that's creepy, dude. You got enough fingers, but they're arranged all wrong. <laughs> she had a puffy, round face with small facial features all toward the center of her face, short orange-red frizzy hair, and millions of freckles. Not very flattering. I'm, tr I'm not judging somebody on their looks, you know. But already, we are starting to paint a picture. <laughs> the rest of the cast is either mentioned once or pretty self-explanatory. Our first sub-story, I suppose it is, making friends, yeah! 
family circumstances led us to relocating to be closer to my ailing great-grandparents in my sophomore year. This was a small town. All the other students knew each other since preschool. For the first month or so after I transferred, pretty much every other student ignored my existence completely. When I say I'm an introvert, I mean it. At the time, I could barely make eye contact with a person that I didn't know, and what made it worse was that the other students in my classes were two years older than me, so it felt like we had nothing in common. It's okay, OP. Your extrovert will be here to pick you up shortly. <laughs> Things were not looking promising until one day at lunch when I get waved to a table. I'd never been beckoned that way before, so I checked behind me real quick to make sure it wasn't a case of a wave for someone behind me. New York, you! Yeah, you! Come over here! Sit down! <laughs> I meekly came and sat at the table. On this day, it was just New York and artists there. I'd recognize them from the one time that we had to get our choir outfits ordered. We were the only three that had to order from the plus size section, and we had spent nearly an hour trying to find the dress that actually matched the regular ones in the catalogs. God, that makes me sound old. <laughs> uh, you're in good company, honestly. Other than that, I hadn't really talked to them before. Artist, hey, so you just moved to town? I've seen you in band and choir. You're like a senior, right? No, I'm a junior, actually, I think, I replied. I just take a lot of senior classes. Artist, oh, do you have a license and a car? Oh no, I thought. They just wanted somebody who could drive them around. Rejection incoming, OP. Well, no. I'm actually only 15. I just got bumped into older classes because this school doesn't have a running start program. But sweet artist didn't miss a beat. Dang, that's okay. We're 15 too, sophomores. You're really good, you know, in music. You should hang out with us more. New York is practicing to go to state after we finish our lunch. You should come with us. And that one interaction was what saved me. I can never be more thankful that those two decided that I looked lonely once and adopted me. It's a beautiful thing. Little did I know, however, that they had adopted someone before me, but she had been gone that particular month. From that time forward, I sat at their table every lunch. Athlete joined us the next day, and thereafter, it was peaceful for about an entire month. And then came Starfish Beard. It's been so long that I don't remember why she had been gone. She just suddenly kind of reappeared at the table. I recognized her from the back row in one of my choir classes. She was so unique looking. How could I not recognize her? I like that. You didn't say ugly, just unique looking. Points for OP. As leg beards go, she wasn't terrible. Well groomed, smelled okay. Cute in her own way. Uh, but while the others and I were a little pudgy, Starfish Beard was large. Like, almost as big around as she was tall. She was very short, and her tiny hands and feet made her arms and legs seem like they came to a point. Oh, I get it. Everything's falling into place now. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> she was wearing skinny jeans, only they weren't skinny jeans. This was after Y2K. You remember? I remember. <laughs> Baggy, low-rise jeans were in. These jeans were skin tight, like two or more sizes too small. Her shirt was just a little short, so a blinding white stripe of muffin top peeked out. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Her short, curly red hair was pulled back tight into a little poof ponytail, and she wore glasses that somehow made her tiny eyes appear even smaller. Jeez, man, the genetic lottery was not kind. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say it, but yeah, that's kind of the way it's looking. But let's try to judge her on her actions, okay? So Starfish Beard sat at the table with her half-empty tray, facing away from me and staring off somewhere, ignoring her food, ignoring me, and she sighed. Not a sigh of relief or a sigh of impatience, no, this was a theatrical, girlish sigh. Yeah, you know that one. It means, please ask me what's wrong. <laughs> I would learn eventually that this was the starfish beard sigh, trademark. The signature sigh, the sigh 
of unrequited love. Looking back, it almost reminded me of some anime character, only this was way before anime was mainstream. Yeah, I don't know, I'm pretty sure Starfish Beard caught Inuyasha on Adult Swim or something like that. Anyway, at this point, I am obviously confused. I couldn't tell that Starfish Beard was staring at someone, just that she was staring away from us and making her weird noises. I cleared my throat to maybe get her attention so I could introduce myself. New York intervened to me quietly. Don't engage. You don't even want to know. So I swallowed my greeting. <laughs> oh, Starfish Beard! New York barked at her. Leave that boy alone! Starfish Beard finally turns towards us. Starfish Beard's voice was soft, almost like whimpering. He's just so beautiful. We could have had beautiful babies. He'd be so perfect. I mean, I'm short, so he doesn't have to worry that he's short. And we both have curly hair. Chuh, hobbit babies. Athlete murmured under her breath. <laughs> Uh, boom, smashed, burnt. New York held back a snort and tried to redirect Starfish Beard. Yeah, well, you should actually eat something today, you know? Hey, we ordered you a choir dress. You weren't here, so we just used the measurements you put down before you left. Starfish Beard didn't even acknowledge that attempted change of subject. She didn't start staring again, but she did push her overcooked peas and carrots around on her plate. New York. Hey, Starfish Beard, this is OP. She just moved in here. She's gonna hang with us from now on. You know her from choir or something, right? Starfish Beard muttered a greeting and did smile at me, but then, again, went back to pushing peas around her plate, staring blankly at a wall. <laughs> what a fascinating human being. That's her two main personality traits. One, lovesick. Two, doesn't enjoy mushy peas. <laughs> Uh, uh, this became a trend. Starfish Beard would seemingly daydream in the lunchroom, then throw her food out and just drink a liter of soda from the vending machine. Oh yeah, vitamins and minerals, don't you know? <laughs> Artist in New York would attempt to engage with her now and then. Athlete found her utterly exhausting. Starfish Beard seemed contentedly discontent existing at our table. I found her sweet whenever she did interact with us, but just about everything that came out of her mouth was some sort of pining for this boy or some other boy. I thought this must be what it meant to be romantic. I was fully aware that I was emotionally a late bloomer at best. Perhaps she was just more advanced than the rest of us. I don't know, sophomore year might be the time for that awakening, but this is like a really hard awakening, isn't it? Maybe ease into something like this. Maybe you don't sacrifice your whole personality to be some dude's plaything, right? Whatever. So life went on, and eventually, the box with our choir outfits arrived. Everyone else in the choir already had their outfits because the straight-sized ones got there a month earlier. They were those kind of dresses that we knew we would need to have altered in some way, so we needed them a little early. The four of us, New York artist Starfish Beard and I, went to try them on as quickly as we could. Because I have a large bust, my top was really big, but it turned out nice. Artists in New York were pleased as well. Artists in my tops were gonna need to be taken in a little bit, but we did expect that. As we chattered, we were interrupted by a huge sob. We stopped. And now, quiet, small whimpering sounds came from the last stall. Oh, it's like that ghost from Harry Potter or something, right? <laughs> Hey, Starfish Beard, uh, are you okay? Asked New York. Only sobbing came from the other side of that door. Artist spoke softly through the door for several minutes until eventually Starfish Beard did open the door. I really, really feel sorry for Starfish Beard for this one. The top of the dress was a button down satin material and well, it came about four inches short of buttoning. As it turned out, Starfish Beard put down the measurements for her bust only, and her stomach came out quite a bit further than that. Oof. It's... it's not that bad. I think... I think we can fix it, Artis said hopefully. Starfish Beard... No! 
It was so expensive. There's no way my adoptive mama let me buy another one. She said that too. She always referred to her parents as her adoptive parents. She would occasionally talk about her birth mother, and whenever she did, it was with some sort of reverence. Like she romanticized her early childhood, even though I'm pretty sure she was taken away because of a very deeply involved addiction. She would often act as though her adoptive parents were abusive, but I think it was far more likely that they actually just, you know, parented her and set boundaries. I mean, this seems like a not an ideal situation. Part of me wants to feel sympathy for her, but when she comes out the gate like expecting the sympathy, <laughs> I take my sympathy back immediately. Anyway, it didn't matter if her mom wouldn't buy her a new one or not because these were the catalog days. There was no true two-day shipping magic. Getting a new dress would take six weeks, minimum, and we had a choir trip in only two weeks. You're gonna hear me saying this a lot, but my mother in particular, that lady's a saint. I told her about this situation in tears myself, and she did the alterations to my dress, and Athlete's mom did the alterations to Artist's dress. The two moms then did sewing magic, using the excess fabric from our dresses to sew a back panel into Starfish Beard's dress. Because the panel was in the back, you couldn't even tell. It was amazing! Both of those mothers, just domestic goddesses. You all came together to fix this situation for Starfish Beard. Did she say thank you at any point? <laughs> uh, what do you want to bet she didn't? Uh, the band and choir trip. This one time at band camp. <laughs> oh yeah, that movie everybody saw. We came from a small town in the Pacific Northwest. Not a lot of anything in our hometown. A few times a year, the choir and or band would go to some music festival or state competition. For the life of me, I can't remember the name of that festival, but it took place on the Oregon coast in early spring. And the school was pretty cool about it. We had raised money to pay for cheap hotel rooms almost right on the beach. They would take a two hour dinner stop at a large mall outside of Portland on the bus ride over and let us country kids experience some real shopping. That's right, children. You must learn to consume. <laughs> I was super excited. I had worked odd jobs and saved up money to buy stuff at the mall and later on the boardwalk at the beach. My friends and I managed to corner off the last three rows of seats to ourselves. We took turns listening to my Walkman until the battery died. It was during this trip that I finally got to put a face to the legend. Starfish Beard. There! There he is! Oh, he's sitting so close this time! Okay, that's happenstance, alright? That doesn't mean anything. Please don't start journaling about it like the obsessive love video that we did yesterday. But yes, of course, at this point, OP looked up, quite curious. The only other time that Starfish Beard had ever stared at him, there was too much of a crowd for me to be able to pick him out. Which one is it? I asked. Starfish Beard. There! Two rows in front of Athlete. Oh, he's just so... Mm. Oh. Starfish Beard sigh, trademark. <laughs> we were about to stop at the mall at this time and... I saw the boy that she had been talking about. This was Wood. At this point, I knew he was a freshman and was short with dark curly hair. The bus stops and he stands up. Eh, he wasn't all that short. I mean, he was my height, five foot five, but come on, he was a freshman. No wonder I had trouble picking this guy out. Then he turned around. I'll admit, he was gorgeous. Beautiful. Now I knew why. More than just Starfish Beard would talk about him. He had thick, dark, curly hair and a charming smile. But I swallowed down any like that I had for this guy because, well, thy shall not crush on thy friend's top crush or something like that. I mean, you're implying with that statement that Starfish Beard stood a chance anyways. <laughs> not to be mean, but I mean, looks match is a thing. Just don't tell the involuntary celibates that I said that. <laughs> Seriously, now I realize that this guy Starfish Beard was pining for was way out of her league. He was out of my league. He was out of all of our leagues. 
Now I got why New York was always bashing on Starfish Beard's little crush. It was clear that she hadn't even spoken to him before, or at least not anytime recently. Artist New York and athlete were actually decent friends with him in middle school, missing him by a year. I suspect that Starfish Beard started hanging out with them in an attempt to get closer to Woods. What a tangled web we weave! My friends started getting off the bus ahead of me, and I had been momentarily stunned. I quickly bent over to get my wallet out of my backpack on the floor when I felt a pop and a sharp pain in my side. I yelped and stood up suddenly and reached under my shirt. I pulled my hand back and saw blood. Athletes stopped to make sure I was okay. It took me a minute to realize that the wire in my brassiere had suddenly liberated itself and stabbed me under my arm. Bro, what? The, now I got a thousand more things to be scared of. Make sure you buy a new one at the mall that you just pulled up at, I guess. OP says she cried like a baby because it surprised me, and I had only brought one of them on this trip. Athlete's mom, who was chaperoning, rushed over and inspected my small wound, stuck a band-aid on it, and pulled the underwire all the way out. With only one wire, it created a very quasi-moto type of look. <laughs> with one honker donker sitting a couple inches lower than the other hoingo boingo. <laughs> uh, oh, don't worry, honey, said Athlete's mom. It'll hold together for now. And look, we're here at the mall. You can get a new one. They even have a Victoria's Secret here. She winked at me. You can get something real nice. Oh, Athlete's mom likes to get her swerve on, doesn't she? The secret's out! <laughs> <laughs> At this point, my other three friends had come back onto the bus to find out what was taking me so long. Starfish Beard's face perked up when she heard Victoria's secret. Starfish Beard, Oh, OP! You should really see it! Everything is so beautiful! Let's go! I reluctantly left the bus with my pack of friends and traipsed through the mall. That's how you know it was the year 2000. Two decades later, it's just a ghost town, <laughs> if it exists at all. I felt really uncomfortable and uneven, crossing my arms, hoping no other students would notice. We made our beeline to the VS, gaudy, pink, smelling way too strongly of way too many perfumes. I gave a look to New York once we arrived, a look of embarrassment and pain and misery. I'd never gone bra shopping with anyone other than my mother before. Now I was here with friends that I was honestly still trying to impress. New York got the message. She hand signaled athlete and artist to follow her lead and walked past the store as I went in. Starfish Beard did not get this signal, however. I would not expect her to. <laughs> but New York says, hey, Starfish Beard, come on. We're going to get some food. I'm hungry. How about we go get a slice, huh? Starfish Beard says, No, I'm not really hungry. New York. Hey, look, I think OP just kind of wants to shop alone for that type of stuff. Uh, don't you, OP? Starfish Beard interjects. But I wanted to go here before, and I promise I won't be in the way, OP. You can go try things on. I'll even stay in the front of the store. I promise. New York gave me an apologetic look that said, I tried, <laughs> and then took the others to the food court. Yeah, you did try, but now you're abandoning me. <laughs> Never mind, I don't want to go here now. Not with you. I'm going the corn dog on a stick. But what was that one from the Stratbeard saga? Wetzel's pretzels. <laughs> uh, uh. Anyways, OP made her way into the back of the store with all the over-the-shoulder boulder holders to quickly find something suitable. Meanwhile, Starfish Beard was wading through lingerie that wasn't even close to her size, touching the lace with her pudgy little hands and sighing TM. <sighs> As it turned out, I had no idea what size I was. I'd been too embarrassed to think about it when I had been shopping before. Eventually, a sales lady came to my aid. She told me that underwires do tend to burst out when you wear ones that are too small, and she helped me to make a quick selection. Some boring, skin-colored t-shirt underwear, because lacy cute things were really only made for the smaller endowed among us. 
Not that I really cared that much at the time. I just wanted to leave. I made my purchase and returned to Starfish Beard, who was now fawning over all the perfumes. Oh, P, you really should try some perfume, Starfish Beard said, coming at me with a sample bottle. I've already tried on three. It's <laughs> uh, not how you're supposed to do that. <laughs> I was hesitant. I mean, I was happy she found something she could enjoy on this trip. At the same time, I'm very sensitive to smells. I get headaches and nausea from some of these perfumes and colognes out there. I was already getting a little dizzy just from being in the rest of the store. I guess I could try one, I conceded. You're gonna end up throwing up on the bus. <laughs> OP treads lightly here, trying to find the cleanest, simplest scent with the hopes that it wouldn't turn me sick. I finally decided on one that smelled like baby powder in a bottle and offered up a wrist to Starfish Beard. I had expected a little dabble, but she dosed me pretty good all the way up my arm. <laughs> I gave a little cough and suggested that we make sure to get something to eat before we had to get back to the bus. Oh, this is this is cooking up into something, isn't it? <laughs> I wolfed down some soup from the food court so I would have time to see the hot topic. I had wanted to get a t-shirt there, but I had just blown my funds on my new undergarment, so I just window shopped. Starfish Beard did the same, complaining that her adoptive parents didn't give her any spending money. We met up with the others and got back on the bus. See, OP said she was working, saving up for this. Starfish Beard just sticks her hand out. Come on, get it together, you shameless. <laughs> After we had been on the road for a little while, athlete who was sitting next to me began to sniff. Whoa, you like really smell like aftershave, she told me. Not at all discreetly. I smelled my arm. She was not joking. The perfume had reacted with my skin in such a way that it smelled like men's cologne. I explained that it was a woman's perfume and that it smelled much different in the store. Yo, were you sure? Asked New York as she gave my arm a sniff. Huh. It really does smell like cologne. At this, Starfish Beard practically pulled Athlete out of her seat. Let, let me smell, let me! She sat next to me with my arm pulled up to her face and took a good long sniff. Oh, it really does. Starfish Beard sighed, TM. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, I bet that's what... He smells like, oh, <laughs> oh man, uh, the spine is starting to fracture. I turned beet red. New York rolled her eyes. Artist and athlete gave me a wide-eyed look of pure cringe. Meanwhile, Starfish Beard continued to smell my arm while staring at the back of Woods' head. I right, Starfish Beard, New York barked pulling her away from my arm after what seemed like an eternity, but was probably actually only a minute. You're making OP uncomfortable. Heck, you're making me uncomfortable. Go back to your seat. Starfish Beard gave a little whimper, gave my arm one more quick sniff, <laughs> and then scuttled back to the back row seat that she had claimed earlier. I tried to reset my brain after what had just happened. I think the others were trying to do the same because... No one said a single word for the next hour. This would somehow end up one of those core memories for me. You know, those memories that come up when you can't sleep at 2 a.m. Yeah, I do know them quite well. <laughs> it also became a full inside joke for my friends for the rest of high school and even a time after. Eventually, we arrived at the hotel. It was not a nice hotel, but it wasn't terrible either. The Pacific Ocean was only a few hundred yards away. New York artist Starfish Beard and I were all in a room together. Athlete got to go to the room with her parents in it. We hauled our things up into our room in the dark. I plopped my bag on one of the two queen-size beds and turned around to see New York and artist looking at me with a finger on their noses. Oh, come on. Nobody even said one, two, three, not it. <laughs> I paused for a moment. What? New York? Yeah, so, uh... You get to bunk with Starfish Beard. <laughs> with friends like these, right? <laughs> Who needs enemies? I instantly imagined Starfish Beard snuggling up to me and smelling me. 
I grimaced right as Starfish Beard came huffing and puffing through the door. I might have argued, but I wasn't mean enough to do it right in front of her. No, OP, honestly, go ahead. It's probably some stuff she needs to hear in there, okay? Anyways, we all opened up a window so we could listen to the ocean, and we went to bed after watching some cheesy late-night 90s movie on television. It turned out that I actually didn't have to worry about Starfish Beard sniffing me all night, but she did sleep, well, like a starfish. It started out okay. I'm a light sleeper, but the ocean sounds helped me to get to sleep in only an hour or so. Yay, chronic insomnia! <laughs> but soon after I closed my eyes, I got hit with a freezing toddler foot right in the back of my knee, and then a tiny little hand into my armpit, and then a swift kick to my shins. Eventually, I just had to concede and migrate onto the floor. With the window open, it was freezing! I tried to sleep with my coat and sweatshirt on, but eventually I just had to close the window and sleep in the bathtub. Jesus, that is so miserable. Rather than have a frank and honest conversation, you gotta go sleep in the bathtub? I guess it's only one night, right? <laughs> the issue could be avoided for one night, right? Ugh. I slept a grand total of maybe two hours. The second night after I complained about this to my friends, I took athlete's suggestion and slept across the bottom of the bed. Starfish Beard was too short to reach me with those heat-seeking appendages. Hey, now that's big brain time. <laughs> the concert itself wasn't all that eventful. After we were done, we were all given free time to go beach walking, while the bus took some of the students to the boardwalk to go shopping. I had spent way too much on my new undergarments and needed to save the rest of the money if I wanted to eat for the rest of this trip. My friends, in great solidarity, made some excuse about why they didn't want to go shopping after all and decided to stay near the hotel and go walk on the beach with me. Starfish Beard, who had originally been wanting to window shop, folded and decided to go beach walking as well. I mean, she is part starfish. Maybe she'd go see her uncle down there or something. It's <laughs> a dumb joke. It was a little bit of a hike down to where the beach was really accessible, maybe a quarter of a mile. By the time we got down there, Starfish Beard was huffing and puffing. <sighs> Guys, I, I, I think I'm just gonna stay here. <sighs> Starfish Beard puffed. Athlete tried to pull her along. Come on, Starfish Beard. There are tide pools on the other side of those rocks. It's low tide. Starfish Beard hesitated for a moment when something caught her eye. What's that? She bellowed, pointing to something in one of the tide pools. Rolling in the shallow waves of that pool was something bright orange. Oh! exclaimed Starfish Beard. It's a starfish! Oh my god, I wanted to get one at the boardwalk! I, I could get that one! It would be free! Dude, what? She's about to end her uncle's life in front of everybody? This madness. New York. Uh, what if it's, like, alive? You just gonna leave it in the sun and let it die? We watched it for a moment longer. Starfish Beard contemplated diving for it, but expressed that she was too afraid of the waves. The water came up to about my waist at the highest and my knees at the lowest. I'd felt like it was my fault that she hadn't gone to the boardwalk to buy her little souvenir. Eventually, I made the decision. Hey, Starfish Beard, tell you what. I'll go get the starfish for you. We'll check and make sure it's dead, and if it is, you can have it, I offered. Starfish Beard's face lit up, and she quickly agreed. It's a bad decision, you know? Even if it's alive, she's gonna keep it. I took off my shoes, socks, and sweatshirt, then hiked my jeans up over my knees. Coached by all my friends to pluck the poor orange creature from the rolling waves, I carefully timed my approach. It was March, I think. And the weather was typical Oregon weather, cold, overcast, and a little bit windy. I didn't want to get my pants wet if I could help it. You ain't cool unless you pee your pants. I ran into the pool as the waves pulled back and I swiped the starfish, jumping and running back as fast as I could. I had managed to only get my sleeve and pants a little bit wet, as the water was deeper than I thought it was at first, but... My mission had been a success. The starfish was also bigger than I first thought. 
being almost about the size of my hand. You know how long it takes starfishes to get that big? Y y y you better not let starfish beard have it, I swear. The five of us spent a few minutes with the starfish on the beach, poking it and turning it over, until we all decided that it had to be dead. <laughs> starfish beard gave a squeal of delight and put the little treasure in her fanny pack. Lol. That's a big old fanny pack. I guess it fits for a girl with a big old fanny, right? <laughs> uh, I don't even know if you can tell if a starfish is alive or not. I ain't no starfish doctor. I'm a neckbeard scientist for God's sake. Speaking of which, if you watched the episode this far, you're probably enjoying it. I would appreciate it if you subscribed. Then you can consume the freshest daily Reddit content every single day. Promise, swears, he's totally science, just a fact. Make it happen, please, and thank you. So, with that entire adventure over, Starfish Beard decided to go walk out onto the line of rocks that went really far out into the ocean, while the rest of us went further down the beach to see the tide pools. She went really, really far out and sat on a rock, staring out at the sea, probably sighing, I'm guessing. <laughs> hey, shouted New York before we continued on. Just be careful and come back before the tide comes in, all right? The rest of us spent the next several hours playing in the tide pools, finding and harassing sea creatures, <laughs> finding cool colored rocks and shells and picking up sea glass. I felt better once my clothes had dried out. We ran into some other students and played with them for a while. Eventually, it started to get dark. We all headed back to the hotel to clean up before dinner time, where the bus was going to take us into town. Oh, crap, said New York. We forgot about Starfish Beard. <laughs> uh, she's going back home, don't you worry. So at this point, Artist ran back up to the hotel room to make sure Starfish Beard wasn't there, and then we all ran back down to the beach. A million thoughts went through my head. We hadn't seen her in hours. A 15-year-old girl, all alone on a practically empty beach? Had she been snatched on her way back? Did she get lost? Oh lord, could she even swim? Well, Starfish don't really swim, they walk along the bottom. <laughs> uh, when we got back to the beach, we instantly spotted her there, on the rock, right where we had left her. For a moment, I was relieved, but only for a moment. The tide had come in, and those rocks that she had used to get out there were all now about a foot underwater. Starfish Beard! yelled New York over the sound of the waves until eventually, Starfish Beard turned around. You have to hurry! If you go back now, it won't be too bad! And it wouldn't have been that bad. She was gonna get wet, sure, but the rocks were still at least visible. Starfish Beard scrambled and started to go to the first underwater rock. She instantly slipped and skidded on her butt to the lower rock, and then panicked and scrambled back up to the big one. New York, Starfish Beard, don't be an idiot! It's only gonna get worse! Whoa! Artist and I stripped off our shoes and socks and tried to go out to get her, but those rocks were indeed slick. I was terrified, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. New York, ever the fearless leader, sent Athlete back to the hotel to find some help. New York, OP, you're the strongest, and I think we're gonna have to drag him back. You're gonna go out all the way. Artist, you go halfway and help OP drag it to where that big gap in the stones is. After this entire mission, do you think Starfish Beard's finally gonna say thank you? <laughs> uh, I'm taking bets. I nodded and I went back out to the rocks. If I could find footing, the rough waves wouldn't be able to knock me sideways. It was hard, but not impossible. Slowly, the two of us made our way down the rock trail. The water was freezing. It just felt like my legs below the knee did not exist anymore. Early onset hypothermia, safer to just leave it in. <laughs> I could tell that one of my feet had been cut by something sharp, but I couldn't feel the pain properly. Artist stopped at the gap and gave me a little push to get across it. After what felt like an eternity, I finally made it to the big rock at the end, and Starfish Beard was there, sweating, shaking, and hyperventilating. I tried to calm her down, but... Dang it, it's just hard to do that when you're sort of panicking yourself. I tried to pull her off the rock to no avail, 
her little hands clinging to the rock for dear life. <laughs> uh, she fits the name so well. Eventually, I got the idea to have her ride me piggyback on our return trip. It took her a minute to calm down and accept. Oh boy, I had no idea what I was in for. Starfish Beard was heavy, as you can imagine, and her general round shape made her difficult to hold on to. <laughs> uh, she made up for it by clinging to me for dear life with both her arms and her legs. I took the first two steps and then I slipped big time. Somehow I managed to throw her back onto the big rock before I fell waist deep into the water. I pulled myself back up and shuddered. This was not gonna work. The rocks were just too slick. I couldn't carry both her and myself across them. I looked back at Starfish Beard who said nothing and whose face was beet red, covered in tears, sobbing. I looked down to the sandy area below the water next to the rocks. Uh, sand isn't slippery. Bro, OP out here doing the most to circumvent survival of the fittest, right? <laughs> <laughs> not to be so cold hearted, it's mostly jokes. But come on, you're not even trying to save yourself? Ugh. <clears throat> I have a mechanism that I use sometimes when the world is completely overwhelming. I can just change shut myself off for a while and pretend that i'm something or someone else in order to get a job done it developed when i was a small child going through counseling for depression and anxiety that actually ended up to be autism but you know girls don't usually have autism i think most people call this a form of masking but i really take it to the extreme the problem with it is that the mask when used at full force isn't all that intelligent or persuasive. We have a job and we're going to do it. Here, I had a job and I was going to do it. So I slid off the rock and onto the sand beside it. The waves, when they swelled, came all the way up to my shoulders, the icy water engulfing me and it made it hard to breathe. My muscles felt instantly stiff and the undertow threatened to pull my feet out from under me, but. I was okay with that. I was going to do this. Not worth, not worth, abort the mission. <laughs> I then pulled Starfish Beard by her ankles over to the edge of the rock. She kicked and screamed for a minute and then eventually got the idea. I wanted her to sit on my shoulders. She would barely even get wet. Nah, forget that. I'm dragging you by your ankles all the way through the water <laughs> back to shore. If I have to suffer, we're both suffering. She swung a leg around my neck and I grabbed on. Starfish Beard's hands tangled into my hair and pulled so hard that I would normally scream, but we had a job to do. I took two labored steps and then a wave hit. It wasn't high, just to my shoulders, but the feeling of getting her butt wet made Starfish Beard panic and screech. She kicked her legs as if by instinct and gravity took over. She slid down my back into the water. I quickly scrambled and grabbed her legs and wrapped her around my waist. Her chubby arms wrapped so tightly around my neck that I could hardly breathe, but that was okay because the ocean was already making that difficult. <laughs> now that her body was half submerged, Starfish Beard was much lighter, thank God. I took one step and then the next, and then the next. This was going to work. It was going to work. I let out a smile for a moment, took another step, and stepped directly into a hole. I went completely underwater, up over my head, water up my nose, flushing out them sinuses, don't you know? <laughs> uh, not helpful. I had only just managed to hold my breath. I couldn't exactly hear Starfish Beard with the water roaring in my ears, but I felt her kick and her little hands grasped any part of my body that she could reach, leaving nail marks on my face and neck, nearly ripping my shirt off my body. Dude, this plan is so ludicrous. <laughs> Nobody but a 15 year old would think that this would work. These teenagers think they're immortal, you know? And, and OP came very close to finding out that she ain't. I'm so glad this didn't turn out a different way because it seems like it's inches away from that. 
Anyway, Starfish Beard's face, at least, didn't go under the water. Oh yeah, that's the priority here, I guess. <laughs> I grabbed her kicking legs tighter and pulled her into me. I had a job to do. So I took another step and another until about four steps later, my head was back above water. I walked us back as fast as I could will my legs to move, fighting that undercurrent the entire time. I couldn't feel any part of my body anymore. I wasn't even sure if my muscles were responding to me, but gradually the shore did come closer and closer. Jesus, dude. OP is like superhero levels of calm right now. I'd 100% be freaking out. Once I was in knee-deep water, once again, my other friends rushed out to us. New York and artists pried the once again very heavy starfish beard off my back and made her walk the rest of the way. I don't remember very well how we got back to the hotel room, but we did, quite quickly and covered in sand. Starfish beard made a beeline for the bathroom while I, suddenly not so self-conscious, peeled off my heavy, wet clothing from my frozen body. I sighed, wringing out my brand new undergarments now christened with seawater into the sink. I rubbed my reddened skin alive again with the rough, cheap hotel towel and had just pulled on my dry pajamas when I was interrupted by wailing. No, no, not this again! What do you have to cry about? I almost died! How did you not go right into the bathroom and throttle her? <laughs> I'd been so wrapped up in getting warm again, I hadn't noticed that artist, athlete, and New York had all followed Starfish Beard into the bathroom. When I opened the door, I was accosted by such a sight that I will never forget it as long as I live. New York was holding up a shirtless Starfish Beard from under her arms, while Artist was tugging from below on those two sizes too small, not really skinny jeans, Starfish Beard's skin was blindingly white, which made the tiny red lines down her thighs pop out. Red lines from Artist's fingernails digging in, grasping for any kind of grip she could get on that wet, strained fabric. Athlete had the hotel's frail little hairdryer aimed at the edge of the pants, where Artist was working. <laughs> Uh, it's hard enough to take off wet jeans, but if they're super small like this, <laughs> you can't make up a story like this, dude. Uh, that's too funny. Hey, it's no use, cried New York. Stop the blow dryer. It's just making it tighter as it dries. Starfish Beard wailed. J j just leave it. I can just let him dry and then take them off, she sobbed. We can't do that, New York admitted. They're too tight. You're losing circulation to your feet fast. I glanced down at Starfish Beard's feet. The chubby little things were already purple, the sight of which started to make me panic. I I think we need to cut them off, sighed Artist. No, 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 cried Starfish Beard. They're brand new. My my adoptive mom won't buy me new ones. You can't ruin them. New York sighed, admitting defeat. <sighs> I'm sorry, Starfish Beard. I really don't think we could get these off without your feet coming off with them. She turned to me. OP, why don't you and Athlete try to procure us some scissors? If she is or something. Artist and I will stay here and uh, keep trying, I guess. Why OP always getting voluntold to do stuff? <laughs> I just got out of the- I'm staying here to dry off. I'm not going on a stupid scavenger hunt for scissors. For the self-pitying whale that I just hauled out of the water. Forget it. <laughs> but me and OP, we built different, I guess. So Athlete and I did indeed run. Athlete went to her parents, I think, and I ran to the front desk. It took what felt like an eternity to find anyone who worked there, and then when I did finally find someone, it took her forever to find a pair of Fisker scissors from under the front desk that had, frankly, seen better days. I ran, pff, with scissors, <laughs> back up to our room. <laughs> uh, I finally returned to the bathroom when I saw the second leg of those jeans 
pop off of Starfish Beard's purple foot. The wailing had stopped. Normal color was slowly being returned to those pudgy little feet. Artists in New York were drenched in sweat and second-hand seawater. Yeah, we were all just a mess. And whose fault was that? I I is the person whose fault that was going to apologize? Maybe thank anybody? No, never. Not even once in this story. It's driving me nuts. I don't recall exactly what we ended up doing that evening, but we didn't go with the rest of the class to dinner. I think we pooled our money and ordered a pizza instead. No one said a word. We never talked about this ever again. Except now, me telling you guys, I hope you feel special. I mean, I do, OP. You really broke yourself open. That is a harrowing experience to go through. I suppose we didn't get much of the emotion from it because, like OP said, she sort of tuned out. And maybe that's what you gotta do in a situation like this. I hope to never find myself in a situation like this. Whew. After the second night there, we all packed it up, did one last choir performance, then loaded up on the bus to go home. The sun was shining bright, and the bus driver had the heat turned on just a little too high. We were maybe an hour before getting to the mall when I noticed it. It started out as a fishy, sweet and sour smell. Gradual. In what seemed like only a few minutes, it grew to become undeniable. The best I could describe it was uh, to leave some seafood flavor tinned cat food out on a hot day. I tried to discreetly tell where the smell was coming from, and when I turned around, I realized it was coming from the very back seat, where Starfish Beard lay on the bench reading a manga. Jesus, dude, she even smells like the ocean? Have we ever had a beard that was so aptly named? This story's beautiful, OP. <laughs> I must have made a disgusted face because New York, who was sitting in the seat between us, leaned forward and discreetly said, Yeah, I know. That smell. It, it's starfish beard. Whoa. Athlete, who was sitting in the seat next to me, gagged. Ugh. I know what that smell is. I smelled it in the locker room. She's got that crotch rot. <laughs> uh, said not quite as discreetly, but it seemed like no one else on the bus noticed. Artist. Oh, come on. I don't think she has uh, crotch rot. Be nice to her, athlete. Well, she probably got the ocean all up in there. <laughs> uh, did you guys see her shower after that whole mess? She has something up there, and it's rotting, I'm telling you. <laughs> so cold-blooded. Uh, New York rolled her eyes. Yeah, I don't think so. But maybe, maybe she, like, left a tampon in there too long or something. We should just bring it up to her, discreetly. We'll be at the mall pretty soon. Ah, uh, yes, the perfect place to bring up sensitive subjects. In the public, at the mall. <laughs> Uh, I hopped into the seat between Artist in New York and peeked over to Starfish Beard. There really was no denying that that smell was her. Yeah, I say we should, I admitted, but maybe wait until we're closer to the mall. That way, if it is one of those devices, she won't have to think about it for very long. I'm just gonna tell her right now, said New York. We didn't argue. I really didn't want to be the one to broach the subject, to be frank, and... I'm sure the others felt the same. Starfish Beard, New York started. In response, Starfish Beard set down her book and sat up. That was when I realized exactly where the smell was coming from. There, I interrupted and pointed to Starfish Beard's fanny pack sitting on the floor in the aisle. The smell is coming from in there. That poor little starfish, he, he didn't stand a chance. It took a moment and some silence before anyone believed me and was brave enough to investigate. At this point, even Starfish Beard was trying to hold back from gagging. Heck, I think she was shocked that no one else on the bus seemed to be noticing these noxious fumes. New York opened the fanny pack and pulled out a sandwich bag containing one very sad and stinky orange starfish. Bro, a sandwich bag? She doesn't offer her starfish uncle any dignity whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, bury me in a sandwich bag. <laughs> As it turns out, those starfish that you buy 
have been preserved by a lengthy drying out process. Instead, this starfish had been stuffed into a sandwich bag, <laughs> left in a damp fanny pack, sitting in an overheated bus in the sun for the last four hours. We sat there, debating for a while what we should do, all the while fighting the need to straight up puke. At first, Starfish Beard didn't want to get rid of her treasure, but the smell eventually convinced her that it wasn't worth saving. We decided the starfish had to go, and that could not wait a full hour for us to finally stop. Athlete watched the bus driver and gave us the all clear signal. I opened the back window, New York chucked the damn thing out, and I closed the window as quickly as I could. No one else seemed to notice. <laughs> I can only imagine some prison litter patrol coming across that baggie of unholiness, which by then would definitely smell of rotting seafood and death because it is both of those things. <laughs> uh, that's so sad to me, dude. What a waste. The rest of the trip went on pretty uneventfully, other than the furious hand-washing New York and I underwent in the mall bathroom. Starfish Beard tried to lure me back to Victoria's Secret to spray me with that perfume again, and I avoided that, needless to say. She sprayed herself quite liberally with the stuff, but... On her, it just smelled like baby powder, and that was a much more welcome smell, for the back of the bus at least. There is more to come here shortly, but I went over the character limit. <laughs> I'll be posting part two as soon as Reddit will let me, since I'm sure it's going to delay allowing a newbie to post too much. I don't think there's any constraints like that within my personal subreddit r slash reads, but there is like an overall character count for Reddit, which apparently went over. There's another 50% of the story to go, and I'll get into it another day. We just had a, a near-life experience, okay, out there on those rocks, and I'm gonna need some time to recover myself. Somebody come over here and cut my pants off, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the episode, friends. If you did, like, comment, sub, do all them things, maybe share it around. I'd appreciate that so much. Follow me on all the social media things down in the description. I'd also like to thank my Patreon patrons, my beautiful YouTube channel members. Come on back tomorrow, guys. It's going to be a hoot and a half. <laughs> and of course, always remember, friends, you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you then. So until then, friends, bye-bye.